The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Welcome to my brother, my brother, me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy, they call him. Ooh, I'm your middlest brother and apparently cool radio talk show host, Travis McElroy. Around these parts, when the <laughs> moon is at full, on the big bridge, you can see Griffin McElroy is what they named him. After the deaths. So it's still like I'm in a Halloween zone, but I think we this episode is post Halloween. Yeah, like, like okay, long you know what? after. There's like the fourth. No, but here we got an extension because oh. they moved Halloween. Ah, oh. in Huntington and Cabo County, we're going to have some inclement weather. Oh, so they just up and moved it. They just moved the whole damn holiday. You can't do that. You can't. Okay, here's do that. the wild thing: you can, and it's challenging, right? Because what what has happened here basically is that the mayor has said there's a different holiday there's a different day where everyone can go to a neighbor's house and ask for candy and not be killed for it but in fact be rewarded with candy i'm just gonna pick a day where that is the way things are happening but and we're just all gonna agree on that and it's my decision but that allows us to peer through the veil of how like flimsy this whole setup already is yeah that we have arbitrarily said it's the 31st of october every year and we've all bought into that and that's fine and we treat that like that's real because we've all agreed to it so if you just say like now it's the second that's a problem for me because it's undoing Everything. So could it be like if on Christmas Day, big yeah. sinkhole opens up, swallows up all of Disney World. All of it. Okay. Goes right into the big hole. Okay, I'm going to need a second. Get, okay. Yeah. Don't imagine it too hard, Justin. Your imagination is very vivid, and this is literally the worst imaginable thing that could happen for, for you in your life now today. Okay. Could the president then be like, we're going to do, no one's really feeling it. Today, we're going to do Christmas later. Disney World got et up by the continent. So we're going to do, we, all, we will do Christmas. We're thinking, uh, I talked to some people. January 10th seems good. Yep. You're saying could the president, could, are you saying could this president? Because it would seem, events of the past couple of years would seem to indicate he could do whatever the fuck he wants. Then we'll say and president. Could and, and president, president move do this. Christmas Day if none of us are just feeling it. This is the problem, Griffin. This is what Fuck I'm worried yeah, about. Justin, rip one, baby. <laughs> Fucking shoot I moved that shit, the, baby. I moved it from the mic. I don't know what to tell Stab you. Stab that idiot in the side and shotgun that shit, my dude. <laughs> Fuck yeah, bro. I fuck it. I want Christmas to be today because I'm feeling it now with this wild. Now we're getting energy. into candle night territory is the problem. This idea of like I we just do have it, we a, I just want to en- fucking enjoy a Coca Cola Zero vanilla flavor in mm. peace and not be. Have we talked much? Okay, I know this is what we said. We'll talk about the other thing that we said we we're going to talk about at some point during the show. Sure, we'll just bring it up when we need a shot in the arm. Right now, I want to talk about. Have we talked about Dad and Coke Zero? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think we have to have we Surely. have to have talked about just law of large Certainly. numbers. Okay, I always feel like I'm doing a bit when I drink a refreshing Coke Zero. But the thing is, it does it tastes good. <laughs> no, listen, yeah, I, I enjoy Coke Zero. I thought you were going to say you felt like you're doing a bit because every Coke Zero you drink is one Dad can't have because there's only like thirty left on the planet. Right. That's I true. thought that's what you were saying to the point where Dad was up here uh, this past weekend for BB's birthday, and I found Coke Zero, but only in tiny cans. I couldn't mm-hmm. find full can size, as if they said we need to make this Coke Zero last. Here's all I'm saying. After Daylight Savings Time ends, begins this weekend, this past weekend, I guess. I can't, ends. I can't, ends. ends. Okay. 
once that shit ends, that's when my anxiety is like, let's party, bud. Time to ride. Mount up, regulators. And then I, I, am, I think I'm much more spookable. I'm saying we swap Christmas Day and Halloween Day. Do you know what I mean? You're, ju- you're jumpy at that point. You're more jumpy. I'm jumpier. You can get me better on 1225. 1031, I'm strong. I'm powerful. I have cider energy. I have hayride energy. <laughs> and I'm, I'm ready to celebrate the birth of the Christ child and give presents to all my good friends and some to my haters, but open it up. It's, uh, it's fake do- dookie. It would. Okay, I want to hit you fake something. dookie, though, Griffin. I would point out they could reuse that. So it is kind fair, of a present. Fair, fair, fair. Yeah. There's a lot of presents that you can get at Christmas that aren't fun at Christmas time. Yeah. That yeah, that like most of them. There's very few the only things that are like a that are the inverse of that are like a sled. Right? Like it's just but a the, sled. The sled is like just wait a little bit, you know? Well, if you wait a little bit, that's kind of undermining my whole thing. Whole thing. So, but let me so say don't but what, what say about, this. if it was whoa, a time whoa. What about okay. in Australia, boys? We're an international show. Shit, Down there right. in Australia, right. Santa Claus Shit, is surfing right. in. He's riding a surfboard and delivering presents to the kids. He's burrowing in. This is why you need a holiday that can start whenever you want to and can celebrate anything you want it to, but is kind of usually around the Judeo-Christian. <laughs> right. <laughs> Only because it's stealing a little bit of that energy. It's frankly. easier to remember, right? It's yeah. static. It's, it's, it's just not They're already taking care stuff. of most of the advertising. There's a lot of lights up that you can pretend are for you. Yes. Right. That's fun. Can lights time. But if we swapped Halloween and Christmas Day, I do want you to envision 1224 gathered around with your family uh, reading some of your favorite passages. And then it's like, night, night, kids. Hope you sleep tight for the special day tomorrow. And then someone comes down the chimney, eleven fifty nine. Visions of sugar plums. Now it's midnight. That is a ki- that's the killer. It's the that Halloween is, it's monster. It's Jack Skellington. It's Jack. Oh fuck, you're right. That's kind of what this whole movie's about. And yep. This whole bit is not. Oh good. no. Oh we do no. Damn it. Fuck. Should we do our first question though? Yeah, I guess it's just like it really took the wind out of my sails. <laughs> Right there at the last minute, Griff. I bake some salted caramel. Right, you guys like caramel or caramel? Caramel? Are you asking us to read for the show or just like us? No, it's like, what do you say? Like, salted caramel. Just give it a few, give it a few passes. Car- we'll use caramel? whichever one works. Salted caramel. caramel. Salted caramel. Carvel. I think I like salted um, caramel. I put some James Carville brownies for clout. And to make okay, my wait, coworkers, that doesn't make any sense. The way yeah, you need I to baked, take it. I baked some James Carville brownies for clout. Thank you. And to make my coworkers like me more. Yes. But when I walked in this morning, I saw someone already put a big bowl of candy in the break room. Brothers, what should I do? Should I put the brownies out today and have them possibly be overshadowed by the candy, or save them until tomorrow? Or they'll be more specially appreciated, but risk them going stale. This from Brown Nose Brownies. Ooh. I am obsessed with this question. I have extremely strong feelings about it. Here's the: I don't think you have to worry about it being overshadowed by the candy, but it will be wrong. Try again. Incorrect. Well, Next it will step. be shadowed by the candy. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, I think that pe- this is why you jumped in first to bring this heat. Well, I'm saying you're bringing like, now. Well, what is what are your strong feelings, in, sir? I said I had strong feelings, and you're like, let me fucking say nothing for a second. Hold on, Justin. Let me give you a second to I was to trying to up. assuage some worry. I don't want... No, there's no worry to be assuaged. It will definitely... If there's a bowl of candy, and then there's someone puts out brownies, and I am a third party to this. I am a, a passerby employee, right? In my head... I am just registering treats. Mm. Right. At this point, this okay. is like the treat day. Wow. Everybody brought in treats I today. See what you're saying. Yes, and I this know. person who just brought in like a bag, like literally just opened a plastic bag of Smarties and Snickers and op- upended it into a it whatever pack. Both of those. Oh, if you mix chocolate and fruity sweet, get the fuck out of here. Well, they're both in the bowl. The point is like, you're gonna fit, th- and then the other person uh, bakes delicious James Carville brownies that they like slaved over. When you go in, you're like, and you're just gonna combine the two events. So basically, the candy bag person is going to get half credit for the brownies. Yeah, because I see what you're yeah, it's part of like a uniform. It's just like a shared 
it's, it's become a potluck, basically, an event that we all chipped in for. Some of us gave candy, some of us gave brownies. It's become a little unclear, but all we know is we had a great time. That works for everybody but you, the person that worked really hard on the brownies. The problem is, is if you bring them in second day, right? Now it's a chain of treats, and people are like, ooh, candy yesterday, brownies today. Can't wait to see what tomorrow is, right? And now it's like, you no know, it issues. still is a No problem. matter which way you slice it, Damn I it. would... If in this scenario I go for candy every time instead of brownie because I'm really uh, yeah because my stomach like if I'm at work and I eat I see basically I can either eat like a controlled I know what a, a fun size Snickers is going to do to my body this this uh this brownie that has Cajun politician James Carville in it uh I don't know it this is probably going to be a a, a a feeling bad square. Yeah, a, but Griffin, chocolate... your body is a whimsical contraption, and that's true of like any food you're going. <laughs> what you're saying is, you know how just how bad you'll feel from a Snickers. You're... You have no idea how bad <laughs> you'll feel from your weird jalopy, your griffy griffy bang bang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, that's I. You really took me apart there, brothers. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> this is a fun one so far. You have to take this to a different office Ooh. and get a job there today. <laughs> you don't have much time. They've they're becoming instaled. The, Maybe the instaling is you can is pick occurring. one employee that has a lot of clout and you go to them and say, I made these for you. <sighs> Any B days, any B days, it could be a special, any special anniversaries, maybe a first day celebration. <laughs> yeah, that's great. What you could also do is deliver them, hand deliver them to their desks, be the first in the office, drop them all off like your own little uh, Halloween Kris Kringle. And you're going to want to let them know that you did make them and they're not maybe not going to have pen and paper laying around. So just log on to their computers, open up a Word document and just type in, you know, Derek in it. And then do leave that open sort of with this brownie near the screen. And that's going to get you there. Could there maybe be an accident that occurs to this bowl of candy? Wink, wink. Maybe an oh. unfortunate, oh, it'd be a shame if something, oh, where did the candy go? Oh, right in the old toilet. Oh, what an accident. <laughs> All the candy <laughs> flew <laughs> off the table and into the toilet. This is great. You pick up the bowl and you go out of the kitchen and you just kind of walk around all silly going like, whoa, whoa, into the bathroom. And then you say, I slipped so much. <laughs> yeah. And then people are going to be mad because the candy went in the toilet and you say, it's okay. I made brownies. I made brownies. And now brownies. you're also a hero. Yeah. Hey, can I do a Yahoo? Oh, I love that, Griff. That's so fun. This one was sent in by Emma Kant. Thank you, Emma. It's Yahoo Answers user Ramiro who asks, Damn, Yahoo Answers got an upgrade. Yahoo Answers got a what? major glow up, boys. What? Oh, good. I'm just saying this. They got some some flat UI. They've got some nice, pleasant, sort of uh, more round aesthetic for their interactive elements. Logo looks different. Damn, Yahoo got a glow up, boys. I didn't know they had it in them. You are the like probably one of ten human beings that would notice that. It's just, well, it's not, it's probably all of Yahoo, right? Like, uh, yeah, oh, it's they probably made all it Yahoo. look like Reddit. I see. Yeah, somewhat. And this is I just didn't expect it. This would be like if you took the world's oldest person and you were like makeover time and it's like you probably don't need to they're almost done here but anyway this is a yahoo and it's asked by ramiro who asks happy birthday ronald mcdonald the clown turns 56 what would you tell him <laughs> what what would you tell ronald mcdonald on his hey, 56th ronald, birthday happy birthday 56 big ones over the hill you silly clown what would you tell him ronald Ronald, happy birthday. That's an uh, that's an obvious don't stop saying not, that. No, Griffin, I was leading it. That was like my ramp up. Okay. Okay. Ronald, happy birthday. Oh, he's got momentum. I ate at your burgers. Ronald, so it's me. It's me, the hamburglar. I want you no, let me try again. Okay. Yeah, I, but and Travis is gonna try again too, because his also wasn't anything. No, I okay. I ate it as hamburgers. Yeah, and no, that's Ron got some sort of that's got mad cheeseburger energy. But um, let's let's try again. Let's all workshop okay, okay, this. Let's okay, take okay, a second. Okay. okay. Ha Ronald, it's me, the Burger King. I want you to know that even though I'm the king of burgers, you've never 
been anything to me but a special prince. And I've always felt like you are my son. Mm. And I can't believe you're 56. Gosh. Just, what a special day. Uh, so you just want the guillotine then, huh? Because right now what you're talking about doing is impersonating royalty. And this is, and I want you to know, Justin, I love you. You're not the Burger King. And this is Ronald McDonald. And you're going to embarrass me if you do a skit. <laughs> so I'm asking, I'm saying, we, we're, we're going to bend the ear of the 56-year-old Ronald McDonald Okay. Who's done so much for us, and it, n- not just okay. Listen, th- th- this is an opportunity. Okay, let me try. Let me try. Let me try. Let me try. Okay, this hey, Ronald, happy birthday! How's your nuggets? Are you talking about his balls, Trav? <laughs> he would laugh at that. He wouldn't. He's fifty. He that, would. Is, that is his. That is his. Um, that's his style. Like that. That is his sense of humor. That it would get him. Oh, okay. How's so your nuggets is, and yeah. your buns? See, I never would have picked up on that given literally every media appearance we've ever seen from Ronald McDonald. But this may be a Howie Mandel situation where you're like, oh, he's he's fun and he's funny and he's sweet and he's a sweet dad. And then you see a stand up and he's like, I'm, when I jerk my raw dick off and it's like, whoa, what? <laughs> Bobby's world. Uh, thank goodness for uh Howie Mandel, or else we wouldn't have any examples of famous people that seem nice until it turned out they weren't. Thank I can't goodness. believe Howie's the only person it's ever happened with. <laughs> All right, it's Ronald McDonald. What are we going to give? Saying? What are we saying? What are we giving him? We should. Uh, for, we we show up to his big office. And we we cannot come empty handed. Okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. If you say hamburgers or any kind of fast food, Travis, go ahead. I would bring him a large tray, large silver tray, covered, domed, beautiful. And I would say, I brought you a special treat. And then I'd lift the dome, and it's the head of the hamburger. I brought him. I took him down. I got him. We got him. Me and Seal Team Six. Yeah, it's so wild that you think Ronald is not the Hamburglar's boss. (laughs) No, the Hamburglar's always stealing hamburgers from Ronald. You fucking idiot! No, you fucking idiot! Think, think, think. (laughs) Right, Hamburglar. There is is a government. There's a government. There's a government of McDonald Land. Correct. Yes. There's Mayor McCheese. Yes. Mayor McCheese is the one that's mad about the Hamburglar. Ronald's pulling all of the fucking strings. Right. Grimace, Fry Guys, the Shy nuggets. Guys, The Nugget. Birdie. Birdie, they're all rolling up to Ronald. Right. Okay, he's the kingpin. He is the secret power behind the throne. Like Mayor McCheese is a is a uh, a cardboard cutout. Empty He's suit. the Wizard of yeah. Oz, baby. Yeah. So okay. what Justin's saying He's is literally that if, a hamburger on top of a suit. Yeah. Well, that's a good point. What Justin is saying, Travis, is that if Ronald McDonald wanted the hamburger dead, it would have been done decades ago. So. This is what I'm saying. Well, but yes. what if like, what if the, you're you're assuming uh, a level of incompetence in the hamburger there that maybe he has been trying and the hamburger has been eluding. Ronald for 56 years. That's fucking the most. That's Can we the give a little fucking done. credit to the Hamburglar? He has been. He's good at his job, but. Right. I, you know, maybe we've been coming at this from the wrong angle because I've been doing it as a sort of deferential. You supplicate yourself in front of this 56 year old clown to show your respect. Maybe Travis's idea is you're like, look, this is what I'm capable of. Yeah. I have, I have slain your Hamburglar and. Now you know what I can do. So when I'm, I'm the clown I, around town now, right? So don't disrespect me as I move in on your turf, because I have slain your hamburglar, a task that uh, so many have proven incapable of doing over over the years. I don't like it. I want to be nice to him. Uh, what if what if instead this? Okay, listen, I've been watching a lot of Succession. You roll up, you slap him in the face, and you say, "I'm ready to take the throne, Dad," and he's gonna respect that. He's not going to like it, right? He might not love you. He won't like it. Damn it, uh, he's going to respect right. you. That part's maybe not right. And then you uh, I think pee on his fries. Head, man. I think he'll be happy to pass it along. Yeah. Right? Um, I want to tell you guys about some- Wait, guys. We, McSession. Thank you, Travis. McSession thank is you. very thank good. You. I want to tell you all a few characters. We all know the classics. Ron, 
Hamburglar, Grandma Mayor McCheese. Travis briefly mentioned Birdie the Early Bird. Um, I'd like you to come with me to go a little bit deeper. Uh, there are some, it won't surprise you that there uh, have been some secondary and tertiary characters that have strolled through the public consciousness on a one time visit. Justin, to if I may, McDonald Land. I'm already aware of Filet O Fish, the sea captain. That one I know. Okay, good. Do you know about Officer Big Mac? <laughs> Uh, he was the chief of, he was the chief of police. Can you believe that? So, and this was he also okay? We have to a burger headed we, man, right? We need to like yes. name the genus, the the phylum of sapient beings that do have hamburgers. A for burgo heads. sapien, a burgo sapien. He, That's fantastic because it does kind of seem like the hamburger will steal the heads of these people. Oh, That's yeah. not great. He is a hamburger head man for sure. And I do want to, I want to send you guys this picture of, this is a playground piece that, uh, was that, uh, officer Big Mac w was styled after. And it is basically, if you can ima imagine a jail for it's a dog hamburger jail for dogs huh. that is made out of a he huge hamburger head. Just Google that but one. What do you, I don't wanna, what do you put in there? kids the happy meal oh. gang the happy meal gang is like i i think was were joined by the mcnugget mcnugget buddies these are just like some kids that work there but let me hit you with this around the time that the shamrock shake came out grimace found that he had an uncle uh -huh. and this uncle's name was uncle o'grimacy <laughs> no <laughs> It's nothing, McDonald's. Hand to God, <laughs> and Uncle O'Grimacy. Oh, man. Here's here's one from Wikipedia. It says, Vulture, an unnamed vulture who spoke in a monotone voice. No problems there. Seems, seems about right. Here's the last one. This is my f fucking flavor, though. I am hungry. I-A-M is the first name. Hungry. A short-lived McDonald Land character. He died? Who was in... <laughs> Sadly, <laughs> he was introduced in 1998, was dropped in 2001, self-proclaimed as the vice president of snacking. The character was a floating, fast-moving green fuzzball with orange arms and a monstrous face. What? What? And a fast-floating green fuzzball no, with orange you. arms and a monstrous face. I am hungry. Right. That He's the vice president of snacking. Now... Who's the president of snacking? Yeah. Well, I don't know. You tell me. But he wasn't Probably willing to Ronald. take on that level of responsibility. Absolutely not. He's a very busy man. He loves his family and his mistress. He doesn't have that kind of time. <laughs> man, uh, if we Before we get corrected, if we, I just want to say, it's Captain Crook who pilots the SS filet of fish Oh, please don't yell at me, okay, everyone? He steals filet of fish sandwiches, just like Hamburglar. Hamburglar steals from the land. Captain Crook steals from the ocean. Okay. If we if we have not in our nearly 500 episode history done this exact segment, I will shove my own shoes up my butt. <laughs> We've not talked about these specific okay. characters. We have talked about McDonald Land. It is a huge part of our childhood. It's a big Indeed. part of it. Big part of it. Big part of it. I work in an office and I have run out of paid time off for the year. I was planning on faking sick in a few weeks in order to visit my significant other in another city. However, the holiday party for my very small office has been scheduled for the day I would travel to visit her. Should I RSVP to the party to make sudden fake sickness yes. seem Holy more shit. believable? Yes. Obviously. Or do I say I'm not going to save them the extra food slash money, thereby casting down on my absence the next day? I mean, you know. That's from Conflicted in Chicago, but you know the answer. You know the answer. This is some This is some fold the fake permission slip shit. Like, you are building on the story. You're building on the narrative of your illness. Why would he fake sick on the day that we're going to have this rad party? Linda made blintzes or whatever. Like, it's about to get <laughs> lit in here. Her famous blintzes. Fa famous blintzes. And he missed it. You know those things don't, like... Last in the fridge, you can't just eat those on Monday. Yo, he may be dying if he's not coming to get these blintzes. I'm worried. We should That's go it. check on him. We should go check on him. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's so now they'll. There's know just that a mannequin in this bed, <laughs> <laughs> and its its arm is connected to a string connected to a weight on the uh, door. 
he's connected his keyboard to uh, some kind of sound system, and it sounds like he's snoring, but he's not here. If you are to properly lie, you must lie. You must act as though, like even yourself, mm-hmm. does not know the yes. truth. It must be as it must be as unto a surprise to you when you call in. Oh my! I did think I was going, but apparently I'm not. I thought I was going to go with every fiber of my being until the last minute when it just turned out I wasn't. What? This is ridiculous. What are you going to say? No. Are you? Hey, RSVP, come to the party. Um, no. Are I'm you worried I might your, be sick. I might be sick. Are you out of your fucking mind? Linda's making the blintzes, dude. Get here. Get here. Hi, They're it's gonna, me, Linda. I just wanted to check and make sure you were going to be there because I'm going to make a blint special for you. And you know, it's a labor and financially intensive thing. And I'd hate to make a blint if you weren't going to be there. <coughs> you got it. I'm sick. It's okay. I put medicine in it. This is one of the medicine blintzes I make. You have to get more involved with this event. That's the only oh. thing. At this point, they've sensed it. You're waffling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you have, have to, to double down. You have to get more involved with the holiday party. You have to be Santa Claus. You have to volunteer to be Santa Claus. <laughs> I'll bring my karaoke machine, too. <laughs> you have to invite your family to it. <laughs> you do. <laughs> like your mom and dad show up and they're like, I haven't seen I haven't seen Derek in a while. Uh, oh, I guess Derek might not. Oh, yeah, Derek might be really sick. He said, "Oh shit, I didn't hear anything." Oh boy, we should go check on Derek. Hi, I'm Mark's dad, and I'm here for the party. I heard he you said had he Linda's was definitely going to be here. Mark said he's definitely. You have to fucking sell your dad down the river, guys, or find an actor to play your dad Ooh. because that that's another option. Okay, hold on. Okay, I've actually stumbled onto something that I think is extremely powerful. Okay. We why don't you hire an actor? There's so many actors that would love to get a little bit of extra work. Why don't you hire an actor to play your dad and show up to the party and look for you the entire time? Oh. And get increasingly like w- more like I'm certain he said he was going to be there halfway through the party. You put in a call to the actor playing your dad. To let them know that you had diarrhea so bad that you forgot. You diarrhea out the part of you that remembered about the party. You, you actually forgot that your dad was yes, going to be you there. Call and you're your so boss sorry. And you say, hey, I'm so, I can't make it in. But also, I can't, my dad's not answering his phone. Could you please tell him I have diarrhea so bad so, that I so can't bad. make it? And then I have diarrhea so bad that I forgot his number and please uh, yes. call, let my dad know. I'm so sorry, but tell him to have fun. Tell him to Please, have my blints. I, he can have my blints. Have a blints on me, dad. But and is then this, it's not wasted. But wait, is this an actor or not? I've I've mixed up our realities. I'm I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna all, I'm gonna say if it was me, I would hire the actor to be my brother because a father might elicit some sympathy. But oh. like, oh, my son's not here. We're gonna pl- have a catch or whatever. But if my brother's there, and I'm not saying this isn't a goof on you guys or whatever. I'm saying if a brother is there, then right. it's just like, ah, oh, this is kind of awkward, right? Like you don't feel as bad for a brother, and, or maybe like a cousin who just moved to town and didn't have plans that day, right? But so played it's like by and played by a very talented, very capable actor. Indeed, yes. Which no, that we, yeah, you have to have, have a good dad. It. Fuck, that could blow up yeah. in your face, though. That could blow up in your could face. I don't see how, it's Griffin. Like, it's like, mm, these blintzes sure are good, aren't they, Margaret? Yeah. Hey, is that fucking John Turturro over there? Okay, well, yes. Yeah, that's John Turturro. He says he's Mark's brother. Mark's is John Turturro. related to John Turturro? <laughs> I didn't think so, but here we are. If you could get John Turturro to come to the party and say that he was there to surprise you, yes. his number one fan, and you knew he was going to be there, right? of course you wouldn't miss an yeah. opportunity to miss jo- m- meet John Turturro. Listen, the Mickey Mouse Club set this up because it was his biggest fan. This was the day they were going to spend together, and Mark wanted to spend it with John Turturro at the office party so everyone could see what good buddies they are. Right. Why wouldn't Mark be here to hang out with John Turturro, his BFF? He There's was a camera you... crew and everything. You're going to have to hire a camera crew. He was going to uh, let you look at the the early draft for Barton Fink 2, mm-hmm. Barton, Barton Funk. And in this one, he is a session musician in a funk band. 
I'd see it. <laughs> Says Griffin McElroy. The reviews are in. I would like this movie, I bet. I'd see it. <laughs> I'd buy a ticket. That John Turturro's one funky customer. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the money zone. Justin, I've got a job. Not for Congratulations. me. Congratulations. It makes one of no, us. No, not for me. I've got a job to give to somebody. Oh, I need okay. to put somebody in the job that I have. What do I do? I don't know. Oh, boy. Shit. It just came to what? me. What? You need to go to ZipRecruiter. Really? Hiring people, hiring people is miserable. If you hire the wrong person, they might not be a, a person at all. Maybe a toaster. Wow. Is the egg on your face red? Luckily, there's a someone who's going to keep you from hiring any appliances. What the fuck happened to, to that egg? Human work. Why is that egg what? red? What Covered the fuck happened? Sriracha. That's why God. it burns it so a, much. You have sriracha Christ. egg on your face. Okay. I combined two idioms. It was a pork manteau. Come on. ZipRecruiter is a <laughs> ZipRecruiter is a real business, and they're going to help you find the right people. When ZipRecruiter. <laughs> So when ZipRecruiter wants to hire someone, they scream into the sky and pray to God that there was another ZipRecruiter that could help them find people. Who helps ZipRecruiter find people? Well, I, you know, we're having a lot of fun here today in the ad, but I'm assuming that they uh, can use their own powerful matching technology to find great employees for ZipRecruiter. Um, these, the, you know, four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Holy shit. Well, that's right now. Results. Them's results. Right now, ZipRecruiter, you can try it for free at our web address. This is what it says in the copy, but this is not our web address. It's theirs. <laughs> they just put our <laughs> name on it. ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter.com. Then I'm going to redirect it. <laughs> I'm going to redirect it to my Twitter. ZipRecruiter.com slash my brother. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash M-Y-B-R-O-T-H-E-R. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Hey, hey Justin, you were nailing that one so bad, I want you to do the clip one, too. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see you take a pass at it. Fine. Your teeth are on strike. <laughs> That's right. Your teeth are tired of the mistreatment that they've gotten from your um, lack of brushing, and they want you to step up your game a little bit because you're not brushing enough. And sometimes you just make brushing noises mm. for your significant Guilty. other, and we all know. We all know. Spit. Spit? Spit? Quip is uh, going to change all that with a, this a toothbrush. <laughs> this is a very special <laughs> one, though. It's It vibrates a little bit, not too much, not like a wild amount, but it's like a gentle sort of reassuring vibration, and it gives you these little pulses every 30 seconds uh, over the span of two minutes, so you can like know which quadrant of your mouth you should be cleaning at any given time. It's sleek. It's really good to travel with because it's got a little cap that goes on it and keeps it nice and clean. It's also a mirror mount, that travel cap. Um, and here's the cool thing about it. You know, you forget to switch out your toothbrush as often as dentists recommend. Uh, but this is actually a, a subscription service they got where they'll uh, ship you one out on the dentist recommended schedule. And uh, you don't even have to think about it. You just get new toothbrush heads in the mail. It starts at just $25 and you get your first brush head refill for free at getquip.com slash my brother. Uh, start brushing better right now. Go to get quip q u i p dot com slash my brother and get your first refill for free. We are so thrilled at your interest in attending Hieronymus Wigginstaff's School for Heroism and Villainy. Wigginstaff's beautiful campus boasts state of the art facilities and instructors with real world experience. We are also proud to say that our alumni have gone on to be professional heroes and villains in the most renowned kingdoms in the world. But of course, you are not applying to the main school, are you? You're applying for our sidekick and henchperson annex. You will still benefit from the school's amazing campus and you'll have a lifetime of steady employment. And of course, there's no guarantee how long that lifetime will be. Join the McElroys as they return to Dungeons and Dragons with the Adventure Zone graduation every other Thursday on Maximum Fun or wherever podcasts are found. We got us a job to do. 
What? We're gonna send. Yes. We're gonna send us a horse to college. Oh right, right. Hell yeah, we are. So here's the thing: we've got our horse. We picked out our boy. We found uh, this group yeah. that rebuilt. We should back up a little okay. bit. Okay, this is a max fun stretch goal. Yeah. So for max fun stretch goal, we hit that goal, and we said we we're gonna send a horse to college. Did we, we know found- what that meant when we said that? No. Nope. 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 But we found an organization that rehabilitates horses that have maybe been in some rough situations. It's and Columbia gets, University. It does it, send them to Columbia, which is nice. And then it gets them ready to be adopted out by new folks who will take good care of them and love them uh, and, and, you know, give them the love and attention that every horse requires. Now, we've got this boy. He's in West Virginia. He's a West Virginia boy like us. He's going to be rehab right now. He's a little underweight. They need to put some meat on those bones, and he's a little rowdy. So they need to calm down this rowdy boy. And they've given us the chance to name him. We're going to pick the name, but we are going to use the money that you donated to send the horse to college. So thank you. Thank you for that. We're just going to pick the name, but it's you fuck this up, okay? Now, one that you guys had mentioned to me that I still think is powerful. Would that be Mr. Mr. Worldwide? Is Mr. Worldwide? Yes, that's my. That's my. Uh, I'm tossing that one and Rowdy Boy into the into the hat in the hopper. Yeah, as they say, okay. Mr. Worldwide. I feel like if we could, because this is the thing. This is how I look at it. Right? We want to get this boy adopted. Right? We're gonna rehabilitate him, and somebody's gonna be like, "I love that horse." And if we could brand him as Mr. Worldwide, the pit bull of horses. That's I good. Fe- I feel like that's good branding. Yeah, but like, listen, I love, I love this horse so much, and he'll never do anything wrong. But he, there is always the chance, you know. Anybody can make a mistake, right. and you don't mm. want, you don't want to have like local farmers being like, "God damn it, Mister Worldwide, get out of my petunias!" Like that yeah. kind of thing. Wait, you That's don't rough. want that? What about Shadow Mare? Oh shit, Shadow Facts, just take it right from Lord of the Rings. Firebrand. What about sort of like a fantasy thing? Travis McRoy Jr. Mm. That's a pretty good one. That, that's interesting. What's kind of plus and minus with that? Whisper ho- whisper hooves, the quiet horse. Whis- whisper hooves. Whisper. Now what it- He's whisper hooves, the quiet horse. I'm not gonna define this poor guy's identity with this name. It just has to be a regular name that he can feel good about, you know? Something that has just occurred to me. And I am going to put my foot down on this. I am going to merchandise this horse. Yes. Okay. There's no way around that. If we're paying to send this guy to college. And by the way, folks, we found out. And this is where it kind of gets stops being funny. Where we're blowing your cash. And starts to be a little unnerving. Because we're blowing our cash. Is that he could be in college for some <laughs> indeterminate amount of time. We have no idea how long this we is going to take. We don't know how good a student. Uh, Mr. Worldwide's gonna be necessarily. Mr. Worldwide's really good. It's gonna be hard for me to get off that. I can't put Mr. Worldwide on a t-shirt and sell it to help keep him in college. Yeah. What about... That's not... What about Carrots McGinty? <sighs> it feels too meme Just... I mean, just like... What about Carl Habsburg? Just like a, like regular, a regular name. name. Uh, uh, Reintz... Priebus. <laughs> no. <laughs> Too political. I'm going to Google horse name generator. I already Googled it. And that's where I got <laughs> the, some of the more intense names. That's where I got Saruman. What about Superman the horse? That can't go on a shirt. Yeah, Please it. use your fucking brain. Super horse. Super horse is better. <laughs> that's better. Probably an IP. I want to hit you guys with some of the names this horse name generator is coming okay. up because this gave me some wild ones. I mean, like, wh- what am I supposed to do with Flight Stallion? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think Flight Stallion is the right fit for this one. I'm just going to write Tabasco. Tabasco? <laughs> Tabasco's not bad. Joker the horse. Ooh. I don't think that gets him adopted, frankly, but. Todd Phillips, Joker the horse. Do you feel good about Barton Funk? <laughs> <laughs> huh. Matt Heyman. What? Because it's like Matt Damon, but he likes hay. 
I don't think so. Okay, what about Barton Funk? What about Mr. Worldwide? <laughs> Can't put that on a but shirt. But it's spelled different. There's no other way to spell it. What about Webster? Webster I like. Webster's not bad. Webster. It's just a horse named Webster. And like we could do a lot of fan interpretations of Webster. Although like we could put him all over the internet. Whatever. He's our horse. Not technically. It doesn't work. What that about way exactly. what about Webster Funky Tail? The last name is wild because it is a horse, bud. Yeah, but I'm saying that that's what sets <laughs> it him doesn't apart. Need to get a fucking driver's license. That's what sets him apart. Horse. I'm not giving him a middle name, Justin. I'm not going overboard. How do you feel about Webster and then in quotation marks, Mister Worldwide <laughs> Funk? Yes. <laughs> Webster Morning Main. Get Ooh. off, Justin. Get the fuck off that website. That Webster, website Webster Thunderheart. No. I'm no, I'm not on it anymore. Webster Stormstep. <laughs> <laughs> Webster Worldwide. Webster Worldwide. The Worldwide Webster. <laughs> Worldwide Webster is actually Yes, I think that's it, actually. I think we backed into <laughs> Worldwide Webster, and I think it's so good. I like that a lot. I think <laughs> he, I think to his friends, it's just Webster or Webby, if you're really familiar with him. Yeah. But we we know Worldwide Webster is the brand. Worldwide Webster, <laughs> and then like and like his his kind of like you know uh, it'll be the Worldwide Webster colon the Internet's horse. Right. Yes. I like that a lot. I think it's Worldwide Webster. Okay. I think it is Worldwide Webster. That's a quorum. That is settled. Worldwide Webster is the horse that we are uh, going to be sending to college, uh, which is in- incredible. Thank you again for your uh, very generous uh, donations that helped us to get to that point where we feel comfortable committing to. Honestly, guys, I have no idea how much money we're we'll committing see. to. We'll see. You can't give us more money, so it's just less money that we have. Now, if you want to follow along, if we get any updates or anything, you can head on over to um, uh, WorldWideWebster.com. And if we have any information to share, we'll we'll put it up uh, on our website. And WorldWideWebster.com will just redirect there. So we'll have more information on WorldWideWebster at WorldWideWebster.com. <laughs> All right. How about Yahoo? Answer. Yes. This one was sent in by uh, Emma Kant as well. Thank you, Emma. It's an anonymous Yahoo Answers user. I'm going to call them uh, Worldwide Webster Asks. How can I play Ding Dong Ditch without getting caught? I need some tips on how to not get caught by the police doing this. Does anyone have any tips or advice? (laughs) It's that time of year again. If you play Ding Dong Ditch and get caught, you're not playing Ding Dong Ditch. Like, you're, yeah, you're playing Visiting a Stranger's House. Yeah, you're playing Ding Dong High. Let me hit you with this. Is it enough? What if you- Okay, I didn't know if this was going to be a horse name or a Ding Dong Ditch speed strat. No, the horse name is settled. That's settled law. What, would, what, what if you could hack into their ring? If they've got, you know, these Wi-Fi doorbells are all the rage. Maybe the Ding Dong Ditch of 2019 is to hack into someone's oh, ring and just make it go buck hell wild. Yes, that's awesome, Juice, Mr. Robot. Yeah, get in there and like, is that our doorbell, Jethany? Jethany, I think they, I heard the doorbell again. These neighborhood kids, but it doesn't say there's anyone out there, Jethany. What are we supposed to do with that? That's terrifying. There's nothing you can do. And that, You're trapped. You're a prisoner. Once you've hacked their ring, mm-hmm. there's a knock at the back door it's you you got your hoodie pulled up and you're like i i I hacked all your sensitive files now you're gonna help me take down the businesses oh so that i'm looking for my mrs robot (laughs) and i would like very much if you would accompany me to dinner and then smoke's coming out of like your armpit and you're like "Uh uh-oh gotta go be right back here's the problem the can i tell you guys the inherent flaw with ding dong ditch it's not, there's okay. no win state necessarily. If, if the doorbell, if my doorbell rings and I answer it and no one's there, I'm confused for a second, but I get to then just close the door. As opposed to if the door, if someone's there and wants to talk to me about something, that's way more of a bummer scenario to me. If I open the door and no one's there, that's awesome. Oh, that's- so Ding Dong Ditch is a win win because you've done a funny prank. Assuming the police don't catch you, 
And for me, who's been pranked by a teenager, I open the door and nobody's there. I'm like, oh, thank God. Thank Jesus. Oh, thank Jesus Christ. I thought for sure. I thought I'd have to talk to a human being about something. I mean, it is annoying. And I'd rather we didn't. But it is also funny. Yes. Which is hard. As far as pranks go, that makes it difficult. not that bad. It's not that bad. I'd rather people do this to me. Yeah. Than, than hack all my shit. I, why can't we just leave Ding Dong Ditch the way it is? If you get caught, you'd be like, oh, darn it. Ding Dong guys. Ding Dong got Ding Dong darn it, you, you local toughs. You know, get out of town with that stuff. And it's not that bad. Why do we have to make everything so hard and bad? What if you left a treat? Leave a treat. Oh, that's how the police aren't going to arrest you. You have a mini muffins with you every door that you get. And you do one door, and they open the door. And if they see you running around the way, they can be like, hey, get the fuck back here. And then you're like, oh, it's random acts of kindness. I left a but, mini muffin wait, there. But you're saying you left one mini muffin on the port? Like, is it on something? Is it in it, something? Yeah, Travis, it's on, a pl- it's on a plate that you're also carrying around a big stack of plates. But what I'm saying to you, Griffin, is if I opened the door and no human being was there, but there was one mini muffin just sitting on my bare, like, floor of my porch? On your bare butt. (laughs) Bare butt. That's way, I'm angrier now. if I open the door and someone's nestled a a mini muffin on their butt cheeks and they're laying down on their belly, I'm going to be fucking (laughs) P.O.'d. But you're going to be having fun, and more importantly, you're going to have thought about yeah. it. You know what I mean? Yeah, and now we're having a dialogue. Now we're, t- and now and we're now connecting. We're, talking. we're getting to meet our neighbors, a thing we don't do anymore in this cell it's phone It's so age. hard to meet your neighbors when your nose is down in your cell phone. Get a muffin on your butt and lay <laughs> down. It's 2019. Get a muffin on your butt. And and get a friend to ring the doorbell because you're laying. I again, you're laying down, and you yeah, don't. Yeah, you'll, you'll then, probably need the help of the friend to balance the muffin on your butt too. And this is a conversation. Yes, and now we're sparking ideas, creativity. You could just keep the muffin in your pocket, so it it's only you only deploy it if they catch you. So it's like a smoke, like oh, you got me. I was bringing you this muffin, and then if the, if they don't catch you, fuck them. They don't get the muffin. Right. You got to catch me to get the muffin. That Maybe that's the new thing for Ding Dong Ditch is like taken in sort of more, it feels like more of a Scandinavian folklore direction oh. where if you catch the person, they have to give you muffins. Uh, it's like a sort of beloved figure with muffins in his pockets. Mm-hmm. And if you catch him, then he has to give you one. I love it. You got to club him or else yeah. it's not. You got to take, you, you have to take him clubbing. You got to take him clubbing unless he gets to the windmill first. <laughs> There's a lot of rules for this tradition. Yeah, well, that's how you know it's good. How about another question? I love that, Trav. What do you what do you got going on? Oh, I can ask the question, I guess. Yeah, what's up? No, I just I thought you had a question. Like, what's co- what's cooking? No, baby? I mean, on, how are you? Me. No, that's uh, come on, Trav. Really open up. There's no need to let down your walls. Is this because you work really hard on the question list? And you wanted to just read the questions you found. Yeah. Recently, my boss's boss has a flat tire in our parking garage, and I volunteered to help change it. Whoa. <laughs> Oh, then someone in our department needed their car jump. So again, I volunteered. These two events happened within the same week, and I've since been labeled the car guy in the office. A different person is looking at buying a new car and was told I was the car guy. This person asked me if I would go with him to look at cars. What do I do? <laughs> I don't know anything about cars. <laughs> That's from me up. It's the lug nut. Oh, oh that's good stuff. This is this is tactile. Well, uh, yeah, I've I've heard about this, the Honda Fit. Let me pop the engine. Yeah, they got a battery in there, Ooh. and it does have tires. And I know where the air goes in those. So this seems like a good one. It's got a battery and tires. Let, hey, real quick, I just round robin. Okay, I want to go around the circle. Send jokes out of the room for a moment. Okay, I want to go around a circle, and I want you to list. A thing you can do with cars that's outside of like um the the normal operation of the vehicle, right? I'm talking about like a maintenance thing or an issue. If it came up, you would be able to address it confidently. I think I think at least and the first the, we'll see who how how quickly we run out. I used to be able like i'm I'm pretty confident I can check the fuses in a car. 
Okay, wow, that's a fucking deep cut. I didn't think you'd I'd have fucking click and clack on here. Okay. Uh I can chain I can check the oil level. Yucky wiper blades. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I know where like most fluids go. Your air conditioner, your uh power steering. Damn, I think we got a car guy on our hands. No, yeah, that's that sounds it. Like it. You guys, that's about it. Travis, Travis, you can you change the flat? Yeah, I can change the flat. Stop. Okay, well, it's not Travis, it. name the fluids of a car for me. All power, the fluids. You got power steering, you have uh, engine coolant, you have uh, your air conditioner, Freon, you've got... Oh, that's a lot of juices. Yeah, there's a lot in there, my dude. That's a lot of juice in there, I didn't know. Car guy. I'm sure there's more than that. This is the thing is, I don't know... I just like I had the same car for like a decade, yeah. And I kind of learned on that car like how to fix shit in it. Do you got one of them old skateboards broke. that you can use to just get in and under there? No, but I, 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 I've never changed my own oil, but I do know how to do it. Mm. What we've stumbled onto is not Travis's knowledge of cars, but rather Travis's confidence yes. that in a given situation he would be able to. I don't know, you know, just kind of figure it out. Yeah. To be fair, though, that's, that's what we're talking about, here. about everything. That's me in a nutshell. But this is what I'm, I, I'm, I, this is what I want to bring back to this question, which is if all you've done is jump a car and change a tire and that got you labeled the car guy in the office, you don't need to know much more than like if you go to the like if you go to the car lot with this person and say this seems like a good car, they're not going to come back a week later and be like you're wrong, this is a bad car. Like you yeah. all you, like they just everybody just wants an adult around to make them feel comfortable. They just need somebody there that th seems like the person who's going to take responsibility for the thing. If no one else knows what to do, so you Why don't need to earth know. Would you want to bring that? What I, I think here's what I would suspect. I think there are real car people in your office, and they know enough to keep their fucking mouth. Well, shut. yes, definitely that. I could change a tire. Okay, I can jump a car. Okay, I had a um, Malibu that leaked power steering fluid that I had to replace every week. You could, or else the car would stop. stop. Steering. You could yes, follow. I do important. remember that. Yes. You could follow Justin's car like it was a fucking family circus cartoon, just all around Huntington. I know where Justin's been. Follow the fluids. Yeah. The problem is, I just learn how to. I learn how to learn with computers. Where like, if something breaks, I Google it, and I very quickly decide if it's a Justin kind of problem or a real person mm -hmm. kind of problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's Justin problems where it's like. Just dump this bottle of blue liquid into this hole and no problem. <laughs> there's like that's there's those kind of problems, but then people will be like, now make sure here's a, like oh, like if we're talking about home repair stuff, right? If I see the phrase like make sure to shut off the circuit breaker so you don't nope, die, nope, I'm yep, instantly yep, like close yep, tab, yep, close tab, close tab, no, call. Justin, it's fine. There's a switch. You flip it and then you <laughs> no. Won't you die. just have to. Go down to the breaker box and flip the switch so you don't die. No, thank what you. What if the switch I'm is broken? I'm very fine, thanks. Thank you very much. I went to, switch. that happened in my house where I killed the breaker to the room that like I was working on and I went to do it and spark shot out of it. And then I was like, oh no, that's done. I'm, I'm never working on my home because like apparently it was connected to a breaker for a room halfway across the house for some reason. And so I was you like, paid no. someone to die for you. Yeah. Cool. I brought in an adult who said, I Whose actually know how not to die here. <laughs> Whose time had come. <laughs> um, hey, we've talked for a long time without even the thought entering our minds of just speak up and say, oh, I'm actually, I'm not super knowledgeable about cars. I just know how to change a tire. And, yes. That's, and, that's, and that's not very probably funny, though. It's a comedy show. I know. But to be fair, you sent jokes out of the room and you never brought him back. You did never bring him back. So let's, um, today I've got <sighs> some good, good point. insurance tips for you. You need to insure okay. your bones because medical insurance doesn't cover those. Thank you. <laughs> I keep saying it. No one's listening. No one's listening Thank to you. me. Okay. Get flood insurance for your local river. 
People won't tell you that. I'm here to tell you that. Just now, was that flood insurance to protect you from the river, or if the river floods, you get money? It's if for the river's benefit. Hmm. <laughs> Support your rivers. Uh, uh, Travis, did you have some thing you were about to I say? I was going to go to the end of the episode and, and do some announcements. We're there, baby. Okay. We're there. Look around you. Oh, I've we're removed here. the blindfold. Um, yeah. So... First, uh, the new arc of the Adventure Zone has begun, Adventure Zone Graduation. It's out now. Uh, go listen to it and enjoy and tell a friend. Uh, at- Even if you've never listened to the Adventure Zone, this is a fantastic time. We've only had like four opportunities like this. This is the time to jump on because it will be completely from scratch. Yeah, brand new story, brand new characters, brand new world. You don't have to have listened to a single episode before now. Um, but if you are a fan of previous seasons, the book, uh, the book three pre-orders for the Adventure Zone graphic novel, Pedal to the Metal, uh, Pedals to the Metal is available now. Uh, it will be coming out in July, but why wait till then? Go ahead and get your pre-order now so you don't have to worry about it. Go to theadventurezonecomic.com. Uh, coming up this weekend, we're going to be doing our Makeup Orlando show, so be sure to send in your questions for that. And I believe there are some tickets still available for that. Uh, so if you want to come, go to McElroy.family and click on Tours. You can get tickets there. Uh, you can also get tickets for our upcoming Milwaukee show. The Chicago and Minneapolis shows are all sold out, but there are still tickets available for the Milwaukee show, as well as... Uh, maybe there's still tickets available for the Candle Night show. Uh, there will be, because that goes on sale the 8th, uh, November 8th. We haven't even talked about that yes. on the show. Yeah, we did last week. Oh, we did. That's right. I remember now. Okay. I mean, I, I, I talked about it because it was a live show. But okay. yeah, they're, they go on sale, uh, yeah, this, this Friday, uh, which is also y'all's birthday. Yay. That show is never, ever not sold out. Please don't sleep on those tickets. It's a bigger venue and it's general admission. But uh, that please don't please don't sleep on that because we want everybody to come. It's gonna be a fucking party. Uh, I believe they go on sale uh twelve thirty, uh Eastern time. No, twelve p.m. Eastern time, November eighth. Uh, Candle Night tickets available. Uh, you can check our Twitter at McElroy Family or McElroy dot Family uh, tours for the links. Uh, and thanks to Maximum Fun for having us on the network. You can go to maximumfun.org, Check out all the great shows there. Shows like uh, The Art of Process or Mission is X or, you know, whatever. Just click on some shit. And um, how about that final? Yeah, baby. It's finally Yahoo is sent in by Freddy. Thanks, Freddy. It's Yahoo Answers user Crawlordum who asks. Crawlordum? Yep. Oh, wait. It might All be right. Crow, Crow Lordum. Anyway. <laughs> sure. Do I legally own my baby teeth? <laughs> I'm Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad. Square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported. I listen to reading glasses because Bria and Mallory have great tips. You're a comics reader and you want to use a library connected app, you can try out Hoopla. I listen for the author interviews. I'm mad at myself that I waited as long as I did to start reading Joan Didion. They give me reading advice I didn't even know I needed. If you go in person to an event and go up to an author or a filmmaker or anybody and tell them what they you don't like about their work, you're a trash baby. I, look, I understand you didn't like Heroes Season 3. That's fine. I, like, <laughs> I don't actually need to know that information. I'm Bria Grant. And I'm Mallory O'Mara. We're Reading Glasses, and we solve all your bookish problems every Thursday on Maximum Fun. 